I'm Dr. Annette, and I love to help people with a keto lifestyle, with the keto diet. I also promote a keto drink that makes you feel amazing. And today we're going to talk about sweeteners and how they affect your keto journey, regardless of how you're going about it. Um, I talk to people all the time about keto, the keto lifestyle. I talk to people all the time about the things that they do to help themselves be keto or not keto or whatever. And um, one of the things that is unanimous across the board is people always tell me that if they eat something sweet, it doesn't matter if it's a stevia or erythritol sweetener, if they eat something sweet, it like kicks off their sweet tooth. And then they find that they want more sweet things. So some people absolutely say that they find they do much better if they do not eat a lot of things that have a sweet taste. So, but if you're new to the ketogenic lifestyle, you may be struggling with some sweet stuff because unfortunately it, um, it can get to be a little bit of a challenge if you're used to eating things that have a sweet taste, especially sugar, because sugar is so addicting. So I find that people that are just coming off of carbohydrates a lot of times need a little bit of a sweet something or another to get them over the hump because they're used to having that sweet taste, especially if you were a soda drinker or um, somebody who ate a lot of um, breads and like donuts and cookies and things like that. And I used to eat that stuff, so and I still occasionally make them, but I make them the healthy way. Um, but I wanted to just explain this morning, a lot of people recommend that you use like sugar alcohols in general, but I put, I pinned it in the comments for you what types of sugar alcohols you should be absor uh, avoiding, not absorbing, avoiding. And I'm going to give you some ideas as to why that is um, a bad idea to have a lot of those. So um, sugar alcohols are basically, they're, they're like sugar, they're sweeter. They typically have less calories than sugar, so they're a lower calorie option, but not all of them are so you kind of need to do your research um, and typically people use sugar alcohol because it gets absorbed into the bloodstream without increasing the insulin levels so if you're worried about your insulin levels going up which we all should be concerned about our insulin levels but if you're if you're just going after alcohol sugar alcohols as a way to keep your insulin from going up you also need to be aware that they some of them do increase blood sugar and some of them go right through now the two i recommend are stevia and erythritol and some people like to use monk fruit i don't recommend using monk fruit on a regular basis because monk fruit increases your body's ability to make insulin it increases the insulin response now if you're eating something that has some carbs in it and you're using monk fruit as a sweetener then it may work very well for you like if you're using say you're making like low carb pancakes but they still have some carbs in them then it might be something beneficial for you especially if you've been on a super low carb diet for a while to help insulin response but i typically don't recommend monk fruit i usually tell people to stick with truvia and erythritol and those two you can find very commonly mixed together in products like Stevia, um, Swerve. There's one at Walmart called Pure, P-Y-U-R-E. I think there's lots of them out there now. I typically use the Swerve brand for my confectioners, the, um, the powdered version of the sweetener because that's just the one I started using and I'm familiar with it. And I also use Truvia frequently if I'm using a recipe that requires a little bit of sweetener. But it doesn't take near as much. And as you get rid of your sweet tooth, you don't require as much. But the main reason that people avoid sugar alcohols is because a lot of them can have um, gastrointestinal problems, like, you know, explosive diarrhea. Now, I don't know about you, but the words explosive diarrhea make me a little bit nervous. And 
Um, like if you're using maltitol, M-A-L-T-I-T-O-L, it's about 90% as many calories as sugar. So you're not getting a calorie break there. And um, it actually has been proven to increase stomach gurgling and flatulence and a lot of um, issues with di digestive stuff. And diarrhea is one of those. So you wanna be careful with what kinds you use. Now, like I said, I prefer um, erythritol and stevia. Now, some people don't like stevia because it has a bitter taste, but if it's really good stevia, a lot of times it does not have a bitter taste. But if you mix erythritol and stevia together, it kind of takes away the cooling effect of erythritol because it has kind of a cooling effect, especially if you have to use a lot of it for a recipe. But if you mix stevia and erythritol together, they work very well as a combination because they, they keep some of those side effects from, from actually happening. So those are some good things to keep in mind. And you can always look at the glycemic index of things. You can actually go just Google glycemic index of specific foods. I just had a website open and I closed it. That was a glycemic index. But you can just Google it and look for glycemic indexes of foods. There's books out there that talk about the glycemic index of foods. But if you pay attention to which things you're eating, you'll realize that some things have, even though it's a sugar substitute, it's not necessarily winning as far as reducing the number of calories that you're getting, maybe not reducing the number, the blood sugar that you have in your body, um, maybe not giving you the benefits that you're hoping to get by avoiding that. And like I said, a lot of people find that avoiding stuff that tastes sweet is really the best way to go. But occasionally you just have to have something like maybe you're going to a birthday party or a wedding or something and you need some sort of a snack to take with you because you don't want to feel completely left out. Um, so, hey guys, remember to share this if it's helpful. Please tell somebody to watch this if you think it'll benefit their health journey or their keto journey. And if you know somebody that accidentally had explosive diarrhea after eating something that they thought was going to be super good, maybe this is why. So, you know, maybe tell somebody about it and make sure you click follow and see first because you never know, I might come out and do something in the middle of the day that you're not expecting. But, um, Honestly, those are the things that I do. And the reason I like to use erythritol is you can also subtract that from the total carbs. So if you're doing a net carb diet and you're keeping your carbohydrates very low, so you're doing 20 net carbs, you take the total carbs, you subtract the fiber, and then you can also subtract the erythritol or the stevia as well when you're counting your carbs because they don't count as a carbohydrate. Now, some of the others will cause, you do have to count those because they actually increase insulin levels at some degree. So hopefully this was very helpful for you. I love talking about these kinds of things and helping people. And of course the topic is poop talk, right? So make sure that you're reading your ingredients, make sure you're looking for things that sneak in like dextrose, maltodextrin, sorbitol, lactitol, glycerol, aspartame, sucralose, xylitol, and oh, did I say maltitol? No, I said maltitol once. Um, those things you should probably avoid. Stick to erythritol and stevia and only occasionally use monk fruit as a sweetener. But overall, you know, try to keep the sweet things to a minimum. And if you really need something sweet, maybe you should have something that is sweet and has ketones in it. These are flavored with erythritol and stevia. They're sweet. I like to use them if I need something sweet. It makes me feel a whole lot better. And I'm fueling my brain and my muscles with ketones when I drink them. So big win there. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of the upgrades to my video stream here. I added my logo, whoops, right there. And I added where to follow me on social media right there. Sorry, Instagram. You'll just have to search for Ask Dr. Annette to find me. But thanks for watching, guys. I love you. Make sure to follow. Make sure you share. And give me some love. Let me know what you thought about this video. Tell me where you're watching from. And if you watch this on the replay, thanks for coming. And don't forget to share this with someone you love. Have a great day.